Yeah, will the January 6th findings reach the country? Here in American Issues, take two. Very important. And for this discussion, uh, we have uh, co-host Tim Apicello. Uh, we have Jeff Portnoy. He's a special guest today. We like him a lot. And Stephanie Stoltz-Dalton, a regular contributor here on American Issues, take two. Uh, we talked yesterday on take one, um, and uh, we talked a little bit about this. We talked about what was going on January 6th. So today, uh, Tim and Stephanie and Jeff, uh, I talk about whether it's reaching the country because there's some remarkable things coming out. Uh, so let me begin with you, Tim. Um, we, you know, it's clear that you're doing a great job, but is it having any effect? Well, let's also parlay that question as to who's it reaching, uh, the, the message of the January 6th hearings. You know, I did a little uh, background work here and, um, you know, in 1954, there was about 58 million Americans and um, about 59% of those Americans were watching the Joseph McCarthy hearings. Then fast forward to uh, the Watergate hearings, we had about 212 million Americans and uh, about 1.8% or three or 4 million people were watching the Watergate hearings. Not very many. Now go to the um, first June 10th, January 6th hearing, and we had 20 million folks, but uh, compare that to 310 million Americans, we're about 6.5% viewership. So I don't know if that, that gives me a trend or not, probably not, but it probably is closer to Samuel Clemens lies, damn lies and statistics quotation. Uh, <laughs> what's it say to us? I don't know, but it is reaching Americans. 6.5% is you know, a significant number higher than the 1.8 in 1973. Uh, but who's watching it? Democrats, independents, or the GOP? I'd have to say independents and Democrats. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, is, is Fox News showing this? Uh, the people who watch Fox News give a rip about it, and they feel it's all a witch hunt. Uh, Stephanie, um, well, do, a, do you think that there's a, is a fair and balanced reporting between the left and the right here, so it neutralizes itself? Well, I understand that the only that Fox is, uh, I mean, Republicans are 10% of them are watching the, um, the, the, the January proceedings. So, and Fox is off and on about it. You know, anywhere you, time you go to Fox, it's immigration, it's inflation, it's Hunter Biden, it's, you know, tech issues. I mean, it just, they just continue to, to distract from it. But I, um, they do, they're, they're doing a little bit better. I haven't checked it this week or last week. I don't know that they're running the whole things. They, they didn't run the first one and then they ran the second one. So I don't know what they're continuing to do. But yeah. only about 10% of Republicans are watching it. So that, that's why your question is very good. So Jeffrey, let me, let me re refine the question, Jeff. Um, is it going to reach America, the electorate, by the time it needs to reach them? Because if it reaches them on a delayed basis, you know, five years down the road, that's nice for the historians, but it isn't nice for the election. The election is only a few months away. What do you think, Jeff? I think it's theater. I think it's had no impact on anyone other than folks who have already made up their mind. Maybe there's a very small percentage who have been influenced by it. Um, I don't know the statistics. I don't know. I'm sure the polls will come out and say, you know, how many people watched all or part of the hearings and how many were from which political party. I mean, if it changed any minds, it changed very few. I think the Republicans have their own story and their own history. And nothing that's going to be done at these hearings is going to change their mind. I think the Democrats have their story and their history. The only thing, in my view, that may move the line is whether any indictments come out. That would be significant. But I don't think, I think it's a bunch of talking heads, to be quite honest. I, if you watch MSNBC, you know what you're going to see about how they interpret the hearings. If you watch Fox, you know what they're going to say. If you watch CNN, you can pretty well guess what they're going to say. And, you know, I mean, for the panel, for the Democrats, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's good theater, but uh, I don't think it's going to have much impact at all on the elections. You mentioned that the exception to that would be um, an indictment. Why? Because the people who 
um, don't want to hear about the democratic point of view. Um, they don't want to hear about indictments either. Why, why is that special? Well, I mean, theoretically, it removes it from partisan politics. It doesn't mean people will accept it that way, but it takes it out of a congressional hearing that's being led by Democrats with two renegade, as they see it, Republicans. Uh, you know, I think, I think at least independents will say, hey, there might be something here with an indictment. And I think it will galvanize both sides if there is one. Now, if you're asking me whether I think there's going to be indictment, I do not. I don't think, you know, they keep saying there's a smoking gun. You know, it just depends how you interpret what Trump said. He certainly didn't say, go storm the Capitol. He said things that the Democrats believe incited people to do that. And the Republicans say he was just exercising free speech. And so far, the Justice Department hasn't done anything that anyone can see. But who knows? I know. You do? The, then tell yeah, us. The Justice, <laughs> the Justice Department isn't doing anything, Jeff. I'm sorry to say. All right. There uh, you go. <laughs> now, you know, you, you have all this, uh, this information. Uh, you've been in court your whole professional life. And many of your cases have dealt with circumstantial evidence. So when, let's, when Trump says, let's have a wild time in Washington, um, can't a reasonable viewer, juror, person uh, conclude that he's really doing a dog whistle on that? Isn't that uh, a circumstantial evidence kind of question? You know, we're getting back to basic free speech. And is, is, it, is it yelling fire in a crowded theater? That's really what it is. Let's take a phrase, a phrase everyone's heard is what Trump said, yelling fire in a crowded theater. Did he tell people? No, he's too smart. Did he tell people to go storm the Capitol, break the windows, and try to hang Mike Pence? No. But did he say enough that people who wanted to interpret it the way they want to interpret it, the Proud Boys and all those other boogaloos, and yeah, did they hear the marching orders? Absolutely. I, you know... Yeah, well, I don't, think, I don't me... think there's going to be any indictments, but it doesn't make what happened that day in Trump's involvement any less dramatic and, and, and serious as it relates to democracy. You've seen, you've heard, you've read, you know, what's been coming out in the committee hearing. And, um, you know, you're, you're, you're a professional. Um, so you. I, put, I, put you on the, I put you on the grand jury here, Jeff, uh, or I put you on the petty jury. And uh, I, I put all that evidence in front of you now. Was he asking them to come and, and have an insurrection? Yes or no? No. I think what he was saying is he was asking them to protest the uh, counting of the Electoral College. Now, you know, you want to interpret that any way you want. Why don't you ask the other two who aren't lawyers and don't think like lawyers, fortunately for them, I hope, uh, <laughs> you know, what they would think, because that's who's going to be on the jury, not, not people that have a legal background and are looking at it much more technically than the people who will sit in judgment. Okay. Tim, you're on the same jury with Jeff. You're sitting next to him as a matter no, Jeff, of fact. No, Jeff didn't make the jury. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, and we're we, not we, passing we, notes we, back I, and I, I, was, I was what still allowed a preemptory <laughs> challenge. <laughs> no question. No question about it. All both, right. Both sides. <laughs> both sides. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I, I'd answer it the following way. What evidence or shows a state of mind that Donald Trump had when he was calling the secretary of Georgia or the secretaries of uh, Arizona or, or Michigan? What was the state of mind for him to try to garnish uh, 11,780 votes? What was the state of mind he was uh, you know, involved with when he was calling the DOJ and having Jeffrey Clark uh, try to install him as his lackey so he can get a statement out of Jeffrey Clark that says, um, hey, don't worry about this. There's fraud and leave the rest up to the Republican legislators. So What's I go the, to state of mind. But, but, but now I'll put my lawyer hat on. What's the crime? <laughs> what, I mean, what's the crime in making the phone call? Is, is, yeah, I, don't, I don't know what the crime is. I don't know, is. Call, is is election sedation? tampering? Is it sedation? He didn't do any tampering. He well, made wait, a call wait, and he yeah. said, find me. He made a call and said, find me 11,000 votes. I, I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna you know, I'm can, sorry, but, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't, you know, I don't know how plain that has to be, but maybe for some circles in this world, a little more plainer. <laughs> well, if we know while we're sitting on the jury, by the way, Stephanie, you're also on the jury, okay? 
<laughs> if, if we know the, the total, you know, circumstances, all the circumstances we've heard, you know, I mean, uh, you know, I asked about what happened, you know, what was adduced in the uh, in the select committee, but you, you know, uh, Tim is right. We should consider what's his name, uh, Harshberger, also, and, and Georgia, and and some of the other things that that the Teflon Don has done um, to sort of explain. Um, make you understand the nature, the way he communicates, his dog whistle way of communicating as a mafioso. Uh, so, so if I give you all those circumstances, Stephanie, and I say this, this um, now query um, is what came out in the January 6th committee, does that show that he specifically intended to call them out um, for an insurrection? Yes or no? Well, I've been on a grand jury in D.C. And, uh, you know, that attorney that's in there talking about these things is real important as to, you know, how he answers your questions and how he presents that information and how he brings in witnesses to discuss it. So in addition to the grand jury people, you have that attorney doing whatever his his agenda is. You can't and, say his. And, or hers. Yeah. Yeah. They were both. And it's probably, <laughs> probably his, hers and it's were there. But um, and then there's um, the, the witness coming in and doing their thing. Right. So the grand jury sitting there trying to put this stuff together. But, um, you know, I mean, it's, I mean, certainly I know where I am on that, I, I, unless I would hear some evidence or, or some some dis description or interpretation of it that that moved it away from obviously, uh, you know, reaching out to 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 make a difference. And uh, the thing is, that why does it have to be for Trump so completely? specific it's just like there's no danger in that he there's no threat to him based on that telephone call he made to the witness that liz cheney mentioned that uh, told us about in the at the end of the last january committee presentation that because he called that witness but that witness didn't answer the phone because the phone wasn't answered that he how do we know it was donald trump got any any um yeah well I, wait, I wait, wait 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 how is it witness tamper? There's no crime. He's not Where a defendant. Hey, but the, the legend, they're holding the hearings. Legal. They have yeah. no, they don't have the same legal force and effect as a court. They don't like it that he made a call and tried allegedly to talk a witness into saying X, Y, or Z. So what? They have no legal power. They're a committee of Congress, which is putting on a show. I don't mean that in a bad way. So how's that witness tampering? If he was a defendant and he made the call, now we're talking about something different. Well, really? No, he's, a he's certainly a person of interest. So he's what? certainly a potential defendant. And he Every wasn't one of us is a potential defendant in something. <laughs> you're, you're too kind. No, look, you know, I, I don't want to be misunderstood here because, you know, people will start emailing me. I think Donald <laughs> Trump is... A horrible human being uh, has done tremendous damage to the country. Unfortunately, 30 to 40 percent of the people love him like they love Gaddafi. Yeah. And fortunately, we still have a democracy so we can have hearings like this. They wouldn't be having these hearings in the Soviet Union. But it is a huge leap to indict a former president of the United States and what it would mean for this country. You got to think that through. If he's a criminal defendant for acts he committed as president, may have committed a lot of other things before he was president. He may have done things as a private citizen. So don't get me wrong. I'm, I, I'm about as anti-Trump as you can get, but I think we're talking about a huge leap. Okay, I, I well, uh, let me ask the same question to Stephanie. Uh, is it a huge leap? Uh, well, you know, would you would you indict? Would you worry about the effect it would have on the image of the country? I don't get that. That Jeff is saying that's such a, a you know a huge thing to indict him. H how can that be? You would do that to a president. That this man is a, a man, a citizen, and under the rule of law, if he does something wrong, he's going to get he's going to get. To, consequences for that so I, I don't understand why you're saying think about how bad that is that this this guy trampled all over the ward walked in front of queen elizabeth when he was reviewing the guard i mean is, he's is that a crime is everywhere. that a crime I, no, wait, it's, it's 
pretty high. Uh, it's bad manners. You have to draw a line between being boorish, you know, and 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 crime. But Tim, you know, from what we know, what about tampering? Uh, you know, we've had all these strange calls, and the you know the president. I mean, if you make a statement or might make a statement contrary to his interest, and one night at ten o'clock at night he calls you, and you don't even know what he's going to say. Is is that in effect all of itself, uh, or do you have to wait for him to say, "Tim, you you can't testify against yeah. me. You don't want to get off my good list." I guess I, I, I'm going to go with Jeff on number one. The call was never received, so no conversation took place. Number two is if the call wasn't received or or taken, how does the individual uh, know for a fact it was Donald Trump? It could have been a staff person. It could have been anything. So, you know, there's two glaring things right there that I just can't, you know, put my arms around as to witness tampering. Um, it's plain and simple. Now, other witnesses, uh, I think it was Hutchinson that testified about, you know, the, the, the kind of uh, mafio, Don mafioso type of suggestions is, you know, Donald's reading the transcripts and he's concerned that you do the right thing. And, you know, the only thing he didn't say is it would be a shame if something happened to your cat. You know, but uh, there was a suggestive <laughs> language that Donald Trump uses as the kind of the the, the dawn of mafia of New Jersey. Uh, pardon to all New Jersey folks, but, uh, you know, um, it, I just can't get my arms around it. Yeah, Jeff, can, can't we factor that in as a piece of circumstance? Yeah, I mean, you might have obstruction, you know, you might have obstruction of Congress or something. I mean, you know, I don't know all the possible things that the, the Congress can do. I don't think there's much, but maybe obstruction of Congress. I've heard that before, you know. I look, I I what new have we learned? Well, that's seriously. True. What, I, what I, new, I totally agree, but you know, what new have we learned from the six hearings that you know we didn't really know about, but maybe now it's a little bit more definite because we've heard it from a witness. What changes? We know what happened on January 6th. We know what happened. Uh, two hours before, we know what happened during, and we know what happened after. So, I mean, where's, I was reading the other day, where's the smoking gun? I haven't found it yet. Well, aside from the smoking gun, what's the, certainly Trump doesn't come off very well. No, of course not. He of comes this. off horribly. And, and the question really, But you is, believed it before it started. I One knew, we all knew it. We all knew this happened before the committee started. Well, no, 40% of the country thinks it's being persecuted. But yeah. what about all of his comments about that he doesn't he wanted those ma the machines removed so the gun people could get in. They're not there to hurt me. They're there to do their yeah. other business. These are very uh, damning statements that he's made that have been reported and witnessed and quoted. So why is that not something new? And, and it's like Joe Biden was working like a demon and with no, he didn't. He's running around all day doing stuff. That while while Trump was all day working on this, the man's never done a day's work since he's been in the White House, but he was working this thing the whole time. He was uh, not out there talking to the crowd. So let's go uh, back to the original question, Stephanie. Um, is this reaching anybody? I mean, Jeff takes the view that it's nice theater, um, but it, in the end, it doesn't mean anything. We, we all knew and we stay in our respective camps. And we're not about to change our minds because of this. You may feel stronger about it, but that doesn't mean the other side, you know, the, the Trump side is going to feel differently about it. Um, is this going to affect the election in November? Actually, the voting starts sooner than that. It starts like, hmm, my God, in, in September or so in some states, to the extent there is voting. Um, well, so you... my question is, is this really going to affect the election? Or are we going to have both houses Republican in November? I think that you brought this up at the beginning of the January 6th when it was just putting a, a committee when it was being put together and I thought it was going to be important. You said you didn't think it was going to make a hill of beans difference. And I think that I know a lot more now. I know what Lynn Cheney said she wanted to know, which is what was going on minute by minute by this man. If we hadn't had the committee meetings, we wouldn't have known about the congressional involvement. Yeah, but how does that change your position? Does it mean you're going to vote differently than you were before? No. Uh, maybe it means that you're going to send money uh, to Democrats all over the country. What does it mean that? Yeah, I think it could mean that, that that might help, might help. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's, yeah. So how well, do you well, know? Let me, let me yeah. go to Tim. Tim, um, is this a lost cause? Uh, are we going to lose not. both houses of Congress? I mean, and, not. Uh, they're going to make a report, right? We should talk about the report. And they're going to put, they're going to make this report soon. They have, they understand the time frame. Uh, I hope, and uh, they're going to they're going to make a report. It's going to go public. It's going to be even more dramatic than what we've heard on television. Uh, the press will be talking about it left and right, or at least the Democratic press. Will it have an effect by November? By this November, I afraid not. But uh, is it important? Absolutely. And you know this report, and I, I agree with Jeff. There's no smoking gun, but what there are is smoking puzzle pieces that create a quite clear picture in my mind that Donald Trump was up to his nose and trying to rig, you know, not rig, but trying to overthrow the, the election process. On every avenue he turned, he tried to do something. And so I think it's, this hearing is showing those individual pieces of the puzzle that clearly indicate his involvement. Now, you know, in 2020, the Gallup poll showed there was 31% Democrats of this country, 25% GOP, and 41% independent. If there's no indictment, I guarantee you a, a certain percentage of the, G, uh, excuse me, of the Democrats and the independents are going to think the judicial system is broken because of this uh, House Select Committee report. Uh, they're going to think there is no justice. And number two, apparently, president can do whatever he or she wishes as Nixon said, uh, I'm the president, so it, therefore it's not illegal. Uh, it is illegal. And um, if there's no indictment, I think that's going to be a lack of credibility and faith in our uh, very important judicial system of this Nixon country. Nixon was never indicted. No, but Nixon said, well, just because I do it doesn't mean it's illegal. But, but Nixon was <laughs> never charged. He was never indicted. And there was a burglary, a crime, a crime. And he was never indicted. He was run out for political reasons, and rightfully so, because they engaged in all kinds of activities. But mm -hmm. and it's the same thing. Well, no, no. But I, I would argue no. that this in was Nixon's involvement in child's in play Cub compared Scout to meeting. this. No, no, but but you know the argument was that he incited his people to do these things, and they were his people, by the way. They weren't citizens who had you know groups of people who believe in certain things. They were his people, his chief of staff, and people working for his campaign. So I'm just pointing out, look, it's all politics. The whole thing is politics. It's the Democrats' last gra gasp to try to switch what the inevitable is for November. And you want to look at polls, look at the polls of what's happening in these races across the country. The Republicans are going to take over the House the only question is by how much. Yes, there's still some question about the Senate, you know, whether it will go Republican or not. So they want to get that report out. They want to get the hearings over and hope that some percentage of independents will cast their vote for the Democratic candidate. But that's the same wish they have for abortion. So, you know, it, it's not like this is going to be the driving issue. I guarantee you it's not. Well, what about 2024? Um, if it's the if, if this is what happens in 2022, well, you're going to get Ron DeSantis, and you'll be more unhappy than we are now. You heard it here on Think Tank. I'm telling you, he's because right. you know he's smarter, <laughs> and his politics are more conservative, and the country will get Ron DeSantis, and then they'll go, God, maybe we should have kept Trump. Well, why don't we just bring in the Iranians? Why don't we just bring in the mullahs to run our country? That's what it'll be like. And we'll oh, no, they can't get in. Oh, there no, you have it. It's called Catholics on the Supreme Court. I mean, almost everybody's Catholic. That's bad enough. But here's the, what's going to save us. Gavin Newsom. He's oh, yeah. He's uh, going to go with Gavin Newsom. He's going to come in. He's got the youth. He's got the stamina. He's got the can do it. He's, he's, got, a, it. he's got a background that's going to be very fascinating when they get into the dirty politics of elections. Absolutely. Absolutely. He can do all that, too. No, I'm, yeah, I'm talking about things that he's done, which, uh, you know. And I'm, I'm talking about things that he, he hasn't did. done. I don't care what he did. Done, you're, you're, assuming, you're assuming it's going to be an honest uh, attempt to assassinate his reputation. How about a dishonest attempt? Well, of course. Yeah. Well, of course. Well, well, hey, Jay, 
That would be interesting. Two white men running for president in 2024. Is yeah. that possible? Uh, it's possible, I'm but I'm not, not touching it. Uh, <laughs> hey, Jay, I want to say one thing. You mentioned uh, 2024, and I think minimally this report, number one, serves as a, a historical signpost post as to what has happened and how this government has kind of taken a left, left turn off into the rocks. But more importantly, no, I no, think- a right turn. Right turn, excuse me. Yes, thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Thank Jeff, you, thank I you. appreciate that <laughs> editorial. <laughs> hey, but it's gonna also serve as a basis. And I, I, I hope Jeff's right. I hope um, Donald Trump is gonna be assigned to the ash heap by 2023, 24, that he'll be irrelevant to being a candidate for President of the United States. That's my hope. But if it's not, I think this report from the House Select Committee will serve as one important thing, as a, a brief, a basis to disqualify Donald Trump as a candidate for president of the 14th Amendment, paragraph three. Well, I, I, I will agree that the one thing that I think this may accomplish, but I don't think it'll be because of a constitutional or legal issue. I think it is hurting him, and it's hurting him with some small percentage of Republicans. And I think it'll be enough, hopefully, that he will not be a credible candidate. Really, I, I think that's what we can hope for. Uh, don't coming we see out of glimmers these of that now, Jeff? We see glimmers of that right now. Uh, and so, so maybe although it doesn't change the result in the election, it, it changes his fortunes, don't you think? Yeah. Uh, I got to got to cover one other point which we should have covered earlier. Let me let me ask it now. I'll start with you, Stephanie. What about the media? Um, what can the media do? Here we have this uh, really rocking committee hearing and interesting information coming out. Maybe it's maybe we knew or should have known before, but it is really, as Jeff says, good theater. Is the media handling it correctly? Uh, can the media do more? Should the media do less? I think they can do more to get down to the knit grit, as you all have been discussing here. What is it that's indictable? What, how likely is he is that he'll be indicted? What is the, what does this mean that a president uh, can't be indicted? Can they? They need to move it off of just what what they've been doing. I think they're over, they're they're running out of steam on just going over everything that they've already said. So let's. Well, they need to take the lead to get into the nit grit because they didn't do that when Donald Trump stepped out from uh, Trump Tower, came down the elevator. Nobody ever started in on him. Most of the people at that elevator ride watching it were all New York Central casting. I mean, there was all kinds of stuff even before you got to the bus with the bad words on it. So I think, uh, Jay, that's a good question and that we need to demand more out of the media's work. Don't just tell us about Cassidy. Tell us about what's going to happen. Yeah, what Tim, you're next? a big uh, First Amendment guy or reverse First Amendment guy, as the case may be. Oh, that's uh, not well true. You think that the uh, <laughs> okay? What do you think that the uh, the First Amendment is in jeopardy here? Do you think the press should be doing more or less? Well, there's a number of Supreme Court cases that put limitations on on the freedom of speech. So it's you know it's laden with them. And uh, the black uh, decision of yelling fire in a crowd theater is just one of many. But you know you asked what the media can do, and I, I I'll say it's not the media; it's the FCC. Let's have the FCC tell. Fox Entertainment uh, to stop, you know, posing as a news station and start delineating them as an editorial board. Uh, let's separate the news desk from the, the commentary board. And that goes for CNN. That goes for MSNBC. That goes for every news outlet. Uh, don't call them news unless they start reporting the news. So if that's anti-First Amendment, then I'm guilty. Jeff, has the media been doing a good job in getting the word out on this? What, if anything, can the media do going forward to, to, to get the reach further into the American hinterland? I think, you know, give CNN some reason to hope that their ratings go up. I mean, you know, <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, it, 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 you know, I mean, uh, you know, Ukraine is kind of faded, so they can't do that for 12 hours a day. So every, you know, every two days during the hearing and the day and the day after, they spend 24-7 on it, as does MSNBC. And Fox, as Stephanie said, tries to figure out what else they can put on, you know, <laughs> what other issues they can put on to distract. And occasionally they'll, they'll point out how ridiculous the hearings are. 
No, I think the media is doing what they always do with any event. I, I go back to its theater. I'm sorry. That's what it is. It's politics. It's political theater. It's entertaining. If you have eight hours a day to watch, you know, and, and uh, it, it's run by the Democrats. And they're doing exactly what they wanted to do. And, you know, you, you ask, frankly, whether it has an impact. I think it has had an impact on some small number of people. Uh, and, and actually, it's, it's creating an, a more evil Trump. You know, he could be just sitting by the sidelines now putting his campaign together, but he's too busy tweeting about every single person that talks bad about him. And he's just increasing what people believe about him, at least the majority of the people, that he's a megalomaniac with serious psychiatric problems. And hopefully uh, that continues and it gets worse. Okay, what can you and Tim and Stephanie and I and right-thinking people do about this? Because you're painting a picture, you guys collectively are painting a picture where this is gonna have no immediate effect uh, and it may not have an effect except in the history books. Well, we all know what we can do. We can just vote or we can contribute to candidates we support. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. You know, the country elected Trump. He, he didn't become president because he wanted to be, and he just simply decided, I'm Donald Trump. You know, the Electoral College elected Trump, and they may do it again. And, you know, it depends on the voters. And I've talked about this ad nauseum on these programs. The country is divided in half. There is the country to the east of the Alleghenies, which is combined with the country somewhat west of the Rockies with a few exceptions. And then there's everybody in between. That's where we are. You know what? You got to do away with the Electoral College because more and more people are moving to rural areas. More and more people are moving out of cities. Gerrymandering is taking away districts that are minority controlled. And the Supreme Court is encouraging it. So, you know, you got to just, just vote. Because I, the well, Democrats, I suppose you the could Democrats, move to Idaho and vote. Well, but the Democrats have won every election on numbers. That's the way the country should be run. Who gets more votes? Not who gets more states. And that's what's wrong. And is that ever going to go away? That's got to be fixed. No, no. Um, Okay, I think it's time for it's time for summarization. If you don't mind, last words. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> well, in, in some sense, Jeff, we're all done. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie, go. I'd like to see the media, uh, the 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 visual, the TV, do more like what the New York Times does and the other the other print media. This Herschel Walker thing has really got me de just desperate for his the person he's running against who's so accomplished and um and and he won't allow and they've fixed it so he never gets to be shown up against uh i'm sorry uh, his name is escaping me he's that wonderful reverend in martin luther king jr's church so why we can't allow that if, if one, yeah. if they can do it in the new york times they can write it down what this man says well cnn ought to be able to see here's Herschel Walker and what he says and run it over and over again. We need more real stuff, which is what they didn't do for us when Trump was running for president. If we had had more information then I think we could have avoided this. Okay, Tim, uh, up to you to make sense of all this and to give us at least a shred of optimism. Oh, Jay. Okay, first off, um, <laughs> you know, uh, hats off to Jeff. I, I agree with his bill proposal of remove electoral college. Uh, amen to that. If I'd like to provide a friendly amendment, and that is uh, turn limits for everyone in Congress, please, uh, and Supreme Court. Uh, but what we really have here, I think, is a picture that we've never seen quite in history, and that is a, a president who just couldn't accept the loss uh, of a vote in 2020 and had to work overtime in every avenue he possibly could to try to just change that, that he would retain power. Um, it's a lesson of, it's a sad lesson of a flawed, a mentally flawed individual who just couldn't accept the loss and uh, to this day still does not. Uh, as far as a positive optimistic look, uh, the gears of democracy is still working. Uh, we have a system as, as uh, was mentioned on this show, we're not in Russia. This would never be viewed in half of the, 
half of the countries in South America and certainly not in Russia or in China. Uh, this is a rare thing that we're watching and it's democracy at its best. My that final means, comment, even though I said I had none, uh -huh. until the country really has one person, one vote, we got big problems. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I guess what I take from that is we're done. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank well, it you. depends. It depends what color you want your meat to be. I'd say we. I'd say we're out of the red and we're moving into the dark brown. <laughs> hey, can really... I use a quotation before we sign off? Can I use sure. one of your quotations? Sure. I think I'm going to soak my head. Uh, can I make a book recommendation? There's a book out, Gideon Rockman. He's written uh, The Age of the Strong Man. So he's a, a editor um, of the uh, Financial Times, Brit, and he's got a fabulous book out that, that explains the globalization forces that are, that are pressurizing all of this and then what happens within these uh, the countries with the, the, the issues of popularism and uh, how these men are so attractive to these people who are so afflicted and the um, liberal democracies are not meeting their needs and they've just got to wise up and become more informed about it to understand the emotional issues that are involved as well as the lack of attention to the real issues on the ground that these people are dealing with. Okay, really we got we got to go. Uh, we got to let Tim go and cloak his head as the case may be. Thank you all. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jay. So enjoy these discussions. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.